Medical alert, double trauma alert, emergency department, ETA, five minutes. Medical alert, double trauma alert, emergency department, ETA, five minutes. Hey guys, welcome back. Welcome back to my channel. So um, I guess if you're a regular subscriber, you um, you probably knew what happened uh, from my previous posts. Um, for those that are new and saw the title, yeah, this is actually um, my second, maybe third attack, uh, heart attack. Be strong. Be strong. first one was really bad I was down in Florida back in 2009 I was actually staying at my parents house I wasn't feeling well um, woke up in the middle of the night and wasn't right had my wife call 911 and uh, yeah they popped in two stents Um, then, uh, not even a month or two later, I still wasn't feeling that great. Um, I was at work, um, not feeling right. Um, they, they, uh, decided to go to a little quick mini med, um, place. And, you know, if you have a history of heart, heart disease, don't go to those places because they're just going to call an ambulance. And that's what they did. So, um... They weren't sure if uh, anything was going on then, so they scheduled a, a cath lab, and sure enough, I had a blockage. Matter of fact, um, on that one, I've got, I've got a picture just to show you what it is. You know, it's interesting. Um, so this is from that second set of stents I got done. Um, you can see right here, this is pre, um, and then they opened them up. There, like, see here, it was pretty closed down. But it was still working, you know. So these ones weren't critical. These were the, the the second two that I got. I got a total of five. First one was critical. That was uh, 911 uh, sirens and everything going. Um, then I got this these two done. And then the one that just happened um, when we called 911 on Sunday was, uh, was interesting. Um... So, yeah, it was like, uh, for me, it feels like, um, for me, it felt like, um, like an digestion. It actually started bothering me on Saturday, maybe even a little bit before that. It comes and goes, it would come and go, you know, and I'd try different things and it kind of get a little bit better, but it just still wasn't right. And I kind of just, to be honest with you, I just didn't want to go to the hospital. Um... <laughs> I know you can't joke around. I did ex everything that you're not supposed to do. I procrastinated. You're not supposed to do that. Um, so, um, yeah, we were, you know, I was post putting everything off. Well, let's see if Sunday, if I feel better. Uh, okay, well, uh, let me grill, do some grilling. I got some stuff I got to do, you know. And then I, I wheeled the trash up to the curb and. I was in so much pain when I came back. Um, they always have you go on a scale of like one to 10. And on a scale of one to 10, it was about a seven. So it was pretty bad. Uh, we called 911. They had me do what I should have known to do because I've been through this, not my first rodeo, but to uh, chew some aspirin. They wanted me to chew four baby aspirin, but I didn't have any baby aspirin. So I just chewed one 325, held it under, your, under my tongue and I actually felt pretty good after that. And I was like, oh, well, you know, maybe I don't need the paramedics. But let's just have them come out. I had um, a little EKG machine thing that you can just put your fingers on and read. But I don't, I don't really trust that thing so much. So I was like, okay, let's just have them come out and, um, and check me out. And 
their EKG was the same way. They're like, well, it looks fine. Uh, every once in a while, there's a little kind of crazy spike. And then they said, but this thing, you know, they told me these, these things aren't the all say all if you're having a heart attack or not. And um, I kind of didn't want to go. I was feeling bad at the aspirin help, but I wasn't thinking right because if the aspirin helped, that meant that it was because of a blockage, right? So um, the female EMT that was there, she looked at my wife like, you need to tell him to go. And then I started thinking about it. Well, you know what? I got insurance. I pay a lot of money for it. What the hell, you know? Yeah, if I'm not having a heart attack, I'll get COVID or whatever. And I'll be able to film what's going on inside the hospital, the big conspiracy. Nothing's going on in the hospitals, right? Well, I'll get to that in a minute. But um, so, yeah, I and it, it's weird. It's a weird thing when you call uh, 911 and it's it's just like embarrassment factor. I can't explain it, but I refuse to get in the I refuse to get on the bed. I was like, no, just put the bed back in the in the van. I'll walk out there. I want to walk out the way I'm going to walk back here in my house. And they're like, you sure? And I'm like, yeah. So I just walked it walked into the um, the ambulance and uh, I did it that way. And I got into the ambulance, laid down. Yeah, and the pain was still there. There was something going on. They Then they start doing all your IVs. Look at, look at this, oh my God. I got, I've been pulling these things off still. I keep finding those little heart patches or whatever, they, they stick them on everywhere on you. And, um, Oh, so, yeah, so I get to the hospital. I'm freaking out because, holy smokes, am I going to get COVID now? I mean, they got COVID patients there and everything. Um, so in the ambulance, they're wearing masks. Uh, they gave me a mask. It wasn't like an N95 where it was difficult to breathe. It was like a surgical mask, you know, and I'm like, this isn't going to do anything, right? Um, but that's like the least of my concerns at this point. If I get COVID, it's going to be three days. If I die, it's going to be like tonight. So, um yeah, so they, they, you know, they get on the laptop and they got me like all wired up like the Borg, you know, and um, we, we, I mean, the, the ride to the the hospital, I don't know, time like flew, it seemed, because it's, it's like a 30 minute drive, 20 minute drive, it seemed like it took us five minutes to get there, and uh, I know he was hauling ass too, but um, it's weird though, because you're, I wasn't laying completely flat. I was like sitting up, you know, they had it propped up. I could feel better when I'm like propped up a little bit and I could see the cars behind us and stuff. I'm like, can they see in here? Um, anyway, so we get to the hospital and they're like, um, asking me questions, you know, do you have you had a cough? Do you know anybody that's blah, 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 you know, going through all that. And I'm like, no, 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 we've been extremely careful and I don't want to get it now. So, you know, I got my mask on and everything. They wheel me into the ER, a um, bunch of other people there. Uh, and I think they had more than one ER. I think they had a COVID ER and then a regular ER. I went to the other one and man, there was like people with, from car accidents and stuff. It was, oh. I've been in the ER before, but this was really crazy. I mean. Medical alert. I saw this girl like walk out of her room. She had like stitches all through her face, blood all over. Um, people screaming like like someone was amputated. It was it was horrifying. And my wife was not with me because you cannot bring anybody with you in there. Well, they said I could, but only for a 24 hour period. And I didn't know what 24 hour period I need if I was gonna just have a stand or if I was gonna have bypass or what so anyway i knew that i knew the routine you know they got to do this blood test it's called an enzyme test and what it does is it it checks for like um heart heart damn muscle damage on your heart and if they do this enzyme test and it's got to be like above um i can't remember like point um oh, 
0.16 or something like I can't remember it's like a really low number and uh, I was just like a little bit above it and it was like oh no big deal see it was just indigestion you know and they go well we're gonna keep you here for a couple more hours we're gonna run the test again and they did another enzyme test and it like doubled and every time they ran the test the numbers just were like doubling 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 so they're like oh yeah we're uh, you're going upstairs um they wheeled me upstairs i got my own room um got wired up there and um met up with um some doctors there and um you know how's everything you know how do i feel and asking a bunch of stuff like so i think what it was is they weren't still weren't sure then the next um the next enzyme test came back and it, it was showing i was having a heart attack and they're like okay uh, you're having it, but it's not real bad. <laughs> Good figure, right? <laughs> not real bad. So they scheduled it for, like, the next day. I'm like, okay. Because, like, I don't know, they put me on some meds and stuff. I was I was kind of okay at that point. So I was just like, all right. Um, and I was kind of uncomfortable, but, yeah. And it was a trip because, like, um, you know, when I got in the room, they told me I could take the mask off. And I was like, really? <laughs> I'm in a hospital. You get COVID. Pay. Oh, no, no. It's po positive pressure, blah, blah, blah. Your room is fine. Just if you leave your room, you know, put the mask on. I'm like, I ain't going walking around here. Um, but so those, you know, I did a video a few weeks ago and I filmed the outside of the hospital. So where is everybody? There's like nobody here. There isn't many people inside the hospital. It was like a ghost town in there. Inside one, because they brought me down like for a CT and some other stuff. Um, yeah, the x-rays, do because they had to check my lungs, make sure I didn't have COVID and stuff. Um, but there wasn't that many people in there. And it was because there's only patients. So I guess when you go to the hospital, one person goes to the hospital, it's like five people got to come in and check on them, you know, and they stay all day, um, day long. So I think what it is is the new restrictions, this hardly anybody there because there's less visitors um so that's kind of what was going on so it was a weird weird evening i was wondering what was going on um then like when am i going to get on the schedule and it's it's weird though because there were like a lot of new nurses like newbies i mean real new I, like started last week you know i'm like oh crap and uh i'm worried because like when you get you know heart surgery you know you kind of want somebody that's like been there before done that you know that kind of thing and when i was in the hospital before i've got friends i got a lot of friends that are full full rns you know 40 year degree rns and and a lot of experience like 20 years experience but i, I couldn't get any of them to come in so uh, because of the rules so yeah so i'm dealing with this noobs and i'm getting a little bit uneasy but I kept calling my friends on the phone. I was doing FaceTime and I was giving them all my numbers and everything. And they give you like a, um, a passcode. And if they use that passcode, they can uh, disclose some information. So anyway, so that's what that happened um, that night. And the next day, the cath um, was scheduled for between two and four. I'm <laughs> What is this? What is this like a cable modem uh, appointment for your uh, for your internet provider? Sometime between two and four. They don't know how long they're gonna be in on the patient before, so it's. Can you hear that? That's not a gunshot. That's actually a woodpecker. Um, so they don't know how long they're gonna be, two to four. They actually took me in uh, not till about five, five thirty. Um, yeah, it was kind of weird. Let me tell you about this this cath room. You go in there, the cath lab. So, you know, they, you're in your bed, your, your hospital bed that you're in in your room is just wheeled right down. I got my mask on and everything. They take me down, down the elevator and it gets kind of cold down there. I don't know why they keep the freaking room freezing. And, uh, you know, there's about four people in there, um, not counting my doctor, not counting the cardiologist. And uh, this one person that I distinctly remember was this uh, little Asian girl. <laughs> and she's like, she's like, uh, 
she's the drugstore and she says if you're in pain let me know and I go I assure you I will let you know um, because they'll tell you that a cath is painless and that's bull okay because it hurts I've done this I've been through this three times the first time I was having a heart attack so I didn't notice it I was so jacked up on morphine but the second and third time it hurt. As a matter of fact, the second time I almost died in there because those stents I showed you are on the left main, which are the most critical ones. And um, they got the stent, uh, they got the balloon stuck. Where did they get it stuck? I think it was like right up here. They got the balloon stuck there, man. And it was in, yeah, cal some calcium or something. Anyway, yeah, it was a bad ordeal. So, anyway so i was like yeah sure you know and she's like distracting me and i'm like and i'm like <laughs> she's really cute and i'm like you're distracting me because she's gonna jam that huge thing up my leg and she's like well well maybe and i'm like and it feels like a bee sting is what it feels like and i'm like okay you know it wasn't so bad but i know what this thing looks like it's like this freaking long and it goes right up and through your groin um yeah so i'm laying there and uh they they the uh the doctor's there now and now she can administer the shot. And there's these big screen monitors, big monitor, and then a couple small ones. And then there's this, um, like a panel that goes over you. And I think what it is is the dye is like this, some kind of, um, I, don't know, I don't know if it's radioactive or what, but I think it, it can be read by the panel. And that's how it, that's how it shows up here on the screen so like this okay so here it's pretty clear you can see it but you won't see anything until he puffs the dye once when he puffs the dye all of a sudden these things all light up and you can see what's going on you know you can see that was kind of blot right there um so yeah he's going through and i was thinking maybe one of my old stents had like blocked up or something or you know i don't know and at this point, I don't know, I'm so drugged up. I'm just like happy-go-lucky. I don't really care. I'm like, I think it's in the right uh, coronary artery anterior. He's like, oh, yeah, how do you know that? And I'm talking to him as he's freaking fishing, you know, with the fishing line going through my veins. And I'm like, because I can feel it. Um, the pain was not just in my chest. It was also in my back. And I think that's a sign that shows that it's the anterior uh, right, right ascending. Um, so anyway... Um, yeah, he, so he's checking all my other stents out. Um, wasn't exactly sure where they were. They do not show up on this. Um, that's why when you get them done, they mark where they are. It's probably good to keep a record of that and have your hospital have all that info. But anyway, they checked them, and uh, they were all good. And I was happy about that because they've been in me for about 10 years, and they're still in, in really good shape. Um, and then he got down beyond that stent there on the right, and uh, that's when we saw a blockage. It was kind of long. And I asked him, how, how long is this stent that you're putting in? It was about an inch and a half. So it was a pretty big stent. Not like diameter-wise it wasn't big, but long-wise it was pretty big. And each time he was like puffing away, man, the, with the balloon or whatever, it, it freaking hurt, man. And I'm like looking at my little Asian girl, and I'm like, mm, and she's like coming up. And she comes over with another and she just squirts it right into the IV. So it's like, okay. Um, but to be honest with you, it's, it wasn't like, um, it dwindled the pain, but it wasn't like uh, you would think. Um, for me, I don't know, some of these drugs don't really freaking do anything. Co like uh, morphine, they went, so anyway, I'll tell you that, but when they, when they remove this sheath and they block your artery so that it'll seal, um, they can do it either with a plug or they do it with pressure and I'll get into that but um, they use morphine on me for that and uh, yeah anyway so um, yeah so we get through the whole thing it took about an hour I think I was in there for about an hour maybe an hour and 10 minutes or so hour and a half maybe tops um, the time before that where they did these stents that I showed you was uh, was about two and a half hours. It was uh, because we had the complications. Um, but yeah, they wheel you up and then they like, don't move. They're like freaking, don't move. <laughs> cause, 
because you know if this thing like pops loose you're gonna like bleed out right and i'm like oh great and i'm dealing with nurses that are all noobs um no they had rms there but i don't know where the hell they were i kept seeing my my assistants and that sort of thing you know and they were great super nice but not very knowledgeable i mean if i started bleeding out i don't know if they were going to be able to stop stop it but anyway so um i was so tired now the freaking drugs and it was all really hit me hard and um i just you know because they said oh you'll be able to eat in about an hour you can move this we can raise you up 30 degrees in like another hour and i was just like i'm going to sleep you know and I, and I slept till about two in the morning and I woke up, hit the call button and my assistant came out and, uh, I had to pee <laughs> and I can't move. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, needless to say, she was very helpful, good with her hands. Um, but yeah, the peeing in the cup thing, you know? And, um, and she, then she said, well, I can pivot you up 30 degrees and, uh, get you your dinner. And I got some food and I was really hungry because I hadn't eaten in days. They don't let you drink. When you call 911, you can't drink. They'll say, don't drink anything. So I'm not telling you to take a sip, but you might want to take a sip because it's going to be your last sip for probably a long time. And, um, so anyway, um, okay. So I had, I had something to eat and I'm, I'm feeling a little bit better. Um, and then it was like, where, where is everybody? Let me pause this for a sec. Camera's getting hot. All right. So now I'm feeling better. You know, um, the pain meds are starting to wear off a little bit, but I'm full. I peed and everything is, is, uh, is going pretty well. Um, I'm trying to remember. Oh, yeah, so I'm tired again, you know. So I'm, I'm like drifting off again, and I'm and I'm having <laughs> it was like a dream, right? I'm having dreams of nurses coming in, and <laughs> looking at my junk. It wasn't a dream. They have to check every like 15 minutes to make sure I'm not bleeding out, and my and my junk is like right there because it's right next to my groin where they did the the cast. <laughs> so it just, I think like half the nurses in the hospital saw my stuff, so that's oh well. And I wasn't feeling good, so they probably come like this. <laughs> um, yeah. So anyway, the next day, uh, they, well, later on, I, yeah, I guess it's the next day. It's it was two in the morning, but the, um, then these two nurses come in, along with my nurse and her assistant. So there's four women in my room. And they're like, um, okay, we're going to remove the sheath. And I was like, oh, I've been through this before. So, like I said, they can do this thing called the plug or they can do just pressure, you know. And it's your femoral artery. So, they tell you, you know, don't tighten your muscles or anything when they push down. So, they're, they pull this thing out and it's like the IV that you got in your hand, but it's like, you know, three times thicker and about four times longer, right? And they pull this freaking thing out, and then she's just just, just clamping down on my freaking groin, and it hurt. It hurt. <laughs> and she looks at the other nurse, and she goes, "You might want to get some morphine." <laughs> so she runs off, gets some morphine, and they press it down. I'm like, "How long you got to do this?" And and she's like, "About 20 minutes." And um, because I w I wasn't really on a blood thinner, but they shot me up with some blood thinner, and you can makes you kind of bruise but anyway um so yeah we started joking around just, just kept checking to see if it was sealed weren't sure pressing down again um and she laughed she's like i left fingerprints on your groin <laughs> um so i don't know it, it's weird it's a it's a it's a it's a really bad dangerous thing but it's you're so messed up, you you just you know go with the flow. And it wasn't wasn't the first time for me, so I, I kind of knew I was gonna be all right at that point. Um, yeah, so they got that thing sealed up. Uh, you know, don't move, blah blah blah. 
Um, and, and then, yeah, so then it was like the next day, everything was feeling better. Um, my doctor came in. I'm starting to get, you know, antsy. Can I get going here? And I started get like losing my breath. I'm like, what the heck's going on? And I'm like, I feel like winded and I'm like breathing real heavy. And um, I put the, the O2 sensor on and I, you know, it gives you your heart rate and everything. My heart rate was like 105, 110 and my oxygen level went down to like 85. So I'm like, what the hell? And, and my cardiologist was right there. So it couldn't have happened at a better time. And uh, he starts changing my meds a little bit. And then they, they had me do the seat. They, they sent me down for the CT scan and a few other things. And then he said, um, it was this blood thinner that they put me on. It makes you lose your breath and everything else. So, okay. Um, so yeah, you can go. Called my wife. She came by, picked me up. Um, we're doing self-isolation now because I was in the hospital. I don't freaking know if I got COVID from all these people or not. So we're just, we're just going to play it safe. Um, and, um, and see what's going on. So it should be okay. Um, don't think I have any issues. I, I'm going to, you know, got a doctor's appointment on Monday and, um, we're going to, you know, just double check everything and then I'll go back to work on Tuesday. But a lot of times when you get like angioplasty, it's like you're not having a heart attack. You just get a little bit of little bit of pain or whatever. You're in and you're out, and it's scheduled. It's not a big deal. So, but for me, because I had a heart condition and all, they um, it uh, they went a different way. They had to be a lot more careful, you know. Um, so I mean, you know, I gotta like make lifestyle choices here. You know, my parent, my brother, my sister, my mom, my dad, all had heart disease. Uncles, cousins, you know. I don't know. I got to decide, um, you know, how much I want to keep working. Or do I want to just um, maybe early retirement or what I want to do. There's this thing called um, ejection fracture, faction. Ejection faction. It's how much your uh, your heart pumps and your blood. And uh, good persons, you know, you want to have it like uh, 60, 65. That would be ideal. Maybe even 50 to, six, 50 to 60 would be okay. Uh, mine's gone down between 40 to 47. Um, back of my heart got damaged uh, down in Florida. But it didn't affect that ejection fraction um, so much. But this time it, it did. So it's even even lower. Um, I don't know. I'm getting older too. So I think also when you, when you start exercising, that's going to help it a little bit. You know, my numbers are lower, they're lower, but they're not bad. You know, they're acceptable. You could, you, I could live fine just with what I got right now. I can mow the lawn or whatever. I'm going to be a little bit winded though. Like when you, like when you hear me, mow, um, washing the car or whatever. Um, but the key thing is, you know, you're not supposed to like let this stuff go. Um, I'm not a doctor. I can't give you advice, but what I personally do, I was looking for two symptoms, um, because I always had these weird chest pains, two symptoms, usually like, a, do I have, okay, I get chest pains. Do I have nausea? Uh, do I have chest, um, pain in my shoulder as well? This time I didn't. So all those little things they tell you about, they're just loose guidelines. If you think you're having a freaking heart attack, um, and I can't, tell you but it's up to 911 but they're probably going to have you chew an aspirin and when you do it you're going to you don't swallow it you chew it and hold it under your tongue and uh, for me it it felt better uh, I, I started feeling better right away um it it thins out your blood a little bit it depends on what the blockage is if you if you have a piece of cholesterol that breaks loose and it goes into your arteries and it just gets caught um you're screwed man hey, there's no way they're going to get you you know, from your house to the hospital in time and get the thing standard. Uh, in my situation, uh, my first one was like that, but the second one was um, they were just slowly collapsing is what it was. So anyway, that's what it is. You know, they also tell you that, um, well, what I heard is uh, hereditary is like 80%. 
or seventy five percent, then your your exercise and then your what how you know how well you eat is like the remaining you know twenty twenty five percent. I'm like you know I'm overweight and everything, so I got to do whatever I can to compensate for this. Um, so I'm gonna be trying to lose weight. You guys got to keep reminding me. So anyway, that's uh, that was my story. It was. Um, it's kind of a weird thing, you know. It's like a, an embarrassment thing. I don't know why. I can't, you're probably thinking, well, why would you be embarrassed? You're having a freaking heart attack. But it's like, I don't know. Well, the neighbors are going to be like, well, what's going on with him? And I don't. So if you know somebody that had a heart attack, you might want to just give them a day or two before you start calling them and wishing them good I don't even want to talk to people. You know, I don't want to tell them anything about it. I'm talking to you guys so I can just point them to this video. So anyway, that's it. I'm alive. Um <laughs> I think I'm a cat. I'm, I've got nine lives. I probably got about four or five left. Uh, like if I think back in time, maybe I've only got two or three, but I'm still here. All right. Thanks for watching. Uh, please remember to like and support. Please remember to like and subscribe. And um, I'll try to give you guys some good content coming up. Um, the weather is getting nice. We're starting to have some car events. Um, I take the drone out. I mean, uh, things are shaping up here so should be good and uh, i want to do another trip to the mountains and uh i'm gonna try to do uh like what traveling robert does and do some not just constant first-hand video but maybe some narration to it um so i'm gonna try and do some of that as well all right take care thanks for watching Bye. New addition to the to the ride with my fuzzy dice. <laughs>